Folks at home, welcome back to the Five Acre Pond Build, and if you missed the previous videos in this series, I'll put a link down in the description below. So last week we added most of the structure to the pond. We added a bunch of pea gravel for bluegill beds. We got that big oak throne set, and we used all of the remaining wood from that fallen oak tree to create different types of brush piles and structure throughout the pond. Now we still have to finish a couple of other projects. One of them I call the feeding trough, and the other one is the shade shack. But before we get into that, I've got some guys coming out to dig an underground well to help us fill up the pond. So this is my first experience with underground wells and I'll show you what I learned throughout the drilling process. So they basically had two different rigs. One of them was a drilling rig and the other one was a water truck. And the whole process revolved around this trough. But basically the drilling rig is drilling down using water to drill through any type of surface whether it's sand or clay and worst case rock. But as it drills down it pumps the water and some of the soil back up and it comes out of this pipe and down into the trough. And so as they drill down and that water and mud and sand comes back up out of the ground, this trough has screens in it and the screens let the water through but keep some of the sand and clay back. And the reason for that is they recycle this water back through this pump which sends it back down through the drill and it repeats the process all over again. So they're constantly having to shovel all of this dirt and sand out of the trough and just keep that water flowing through it. And what these guys are looking for is that water table that is in that really fine sand. And ideally they like to find about 20 feet of that really good sand so they can set their casing and their pump. So the guys just keep drilling along. Each one of these sections is 20 feet. And at one point they hit a big layer of clay and that kind of slows the process down a little bit. It's a little bit harder to drill through that hard clay. And now you can see them start shoveling some of that really white sand out. That's exactly what they're looking for. They hit that really good sand at 120 feet, but they wanted to go ahead and drill it even deeper so they could set their screens and casing in that really good sand. And so our total depth was right around 140 to 150 feet. And check it out, guys. We got plenty of water down there. It's kind of like watching those shows where the oil rigs are pumping oil up, but in this case, it's water. And the guy said it's a really good well with a big water table, so I'm excited. All right, folks, next up is the tunnel pyramid. So I got two 20 foot long pipes and my plan is to cut them into thirds. One slice there, one slice back there. That'll give me six pieces. I'm gonna stack three across the bottom, two on top of that, and then one at the top. All right, we got Terry here with the angle grinder. Fixing, <laughs> to, cut tunnel, us in, baby. fixing to cut us up some six foot sections. So there's actually air pockets in each of these rivets so he's going through drilling that way it'll let the air out and hopefully water will go down in each of those and help weigh it down but we're going to put a bunch of cinder blocks on the outside and then use those to help strap them all down so we got terry here on the drill tell him why i call you terry throw it in reverse terry <laughs> he's always saying throw it in reverse terry <laughs> so just because of that i'm calling this terry's tunnel there you go terry put it in reverse terry All right, we're using this metal pipe strapping. We're gonna go through up under a layer of three. Then it'll be a stack of two, a stack of one. I'm gonna bring that pipe strapping up over the top. Got three metal pipe strands out. All right, come on down with it. Got him. All right, folks, pretty impressed with Terry's tunnel. Definitely think. The fish are going to use this. Here's the size of my hand, just for a reference. Fish have plenty of room to swim in there. All right, we got it anchored down with the metal straps. The last thing we're going to do is go through and put a rope through each of those cinder blocks to tie all of them together on each side. All right, I'm saying it's about six foot four. Six foot two on the mic. Six two. All right, we got the boss lady going through doing an inspection and making sure everything is to code. Look there, we even got Liz up there on the tractor doing a little cleanup duty. All right, folks, in the last video, I was talking about the two different types of structure, that hardwood that's gonna be there for years and years versus this brushy type of tree that if you get hung up in it, you literally just give it a tug and the limbs will break right off. So I'm gonna put a lot of this brushy stuff here in the trough and right there in the dugout. You can see I just dropped a couple of them down in there. Plenty of places for bait to go in between all of those limbs. Now keep in mind these leaves won't be here for long, so 
We're really just trying to get the wood in there kind of crisscrossed and plenty of places for them to hide out. All right, it's time to finish up the feet on the bottom of the shade shack. So I got some quick creep here, some five gallon buckets of water. Time to anchor it down. So for the big brush piles, we used half inch nylon rope, but for these smaller little tree branches, we're just going in with some wire here. And my thoughts are, if you're fishing up here in this shallow area, throwing square bills and bouncing it off all these tree limbs, if you got that rope, you get a treble in it, you're not getting that crank made out. You can bounce it right off of that, no issues. It's gonna work our way down the bank, putting a few cinder blocks on each tree limb. All right, folks, there's a look at the well. They're gonna go in and put the pump down today, but I moved the grill over here so all these trucks and tractors didn't run over the well. But check this out. So the first 45 feet they went down was all sand. And then right at 45 feet, they hit 50 feet of clay. And he said prime time stuff that would have been perfect for the pond. But unfortunately, it was 45 feet down, but it sure would have been nice if it was only five feet down and we wouldn't have to haul all of that in. So today, we're gonna have to hook up the pump and then run the power cables. We've got a temporary power pole set up right over there. So we're gonna be digging a little underground trench right in here, getting power to that. So I'm not sure what I was expecting a five horsepower pump to look like, but I definitely wasn't expecting it to look like this, but it's pretty cool. It's just a long cylinder shape. They'll drop down inside of that casing down about 100 feet and they already got the power cables connected to it and it's about to go down. All right, folks, they finished up. We got the well installed. Let's check out the different attachments. We got a three quarter inch typical water hose attachment, an inch and a quarter, and then our two inch that's gonna go to the pond over there. But let's check out the water pressure on a five horsepower pump. <laughs> we could almost reach the pond from here. All right, inch and a quarter. Oh yeah, we have plenty of pressure. This is called a cycle stop, which is basically like a pressure regulator. It'll keep that pressure between 40 and 60 PSI and also help protect that pump that's down there. So I tried to get the guys to go ahead and run me a two inch pipe over there to the pond, but they got too many wells to dig. So looks like I'm gonna have to do that part myself. And with a two inch pipe, you definitely can't put it above ground there because that would keep everybody from driving through. So I really need a ditch witch or something to dig this, but I think I have an attachment for the tractor that may get the job done. So we're fixing to hook that up and see if I can dig us out a little ditch. All right, I got all the pipe laid out like I like it. It's about 160 feet. Let's go look at the pond in. So keep in mind, this is going to be buried underground right here. So it's going to be a little bit lower. And then right about there, that's going to be the water line. So I think I'm going to have it come out right there. That's a good spot. I think I'm going to get one of those old stumps or something and bring it and set it right here. To make sure I stay on track with the tractor, I think I'm going to slide all this PVC pipe over and put a long rope out. So I got this attachment for the tractor last fall. I think it's called a middle buster or something like that, but basically it's just several little small plows. But I think I'm going to take those off, put the big boy on, and that should be perfect for digging the ditch we need. We got it lined out. That looks pretty straight to me. Time to dig. I'll have to say, I'm pretty impressed with my little ditch digger. Never ceases to amaze me all the different things you can do with the tractor. I just put a couple 90s in there to get it down to ground level. And there we are, folks. 160 feet of pipe all the way down to the pond. All right, I got the pipe ran all the way down here to the water line, but I don't want it going under that clay blanket. So I brought one last piece of old oak tree and I'm gonna try to prop it up right there, run that PPC right through the V there. Last thing I did is come through and seed it with some brown top millet. That stuff will sprout in about three to five days and it'll be looking like that. All right, folks, back the next day. We're about to test it out. Turn the water on, see how fast it comes out. I got Liz up there about to do the honors. I can hear it coming. Well, we got water. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna finish tying everything down. Now we know we got plenty of water coming out. It won't take it long to fill it up. <laughs> Still coming out of that long pipe. That's pretty awesome. We got water. Yeah. Liz said she only turned half throttle on, so we got a lot more 
force than that. But so the major question is, should we let mother nature fill her up or the new well or a combination of both? You guys leave a comment below. Let us know how fast you want us to get this pond full of water. I'm thinking kind of fast. So that's my one concern about using this to fill the whole thing up. You can see just for that little bit we put in, it creates some eroding right there. So I think if I put some concrete blocks or something down right here for it to hit and splash off of, we might be all right. So I was trying to get a few more things tied down into the pond, but Mother Nature had a different idea and decided it was time to add some water to the pond. And I definitely didn't want to have my truck down in there when it started filling up. So I got it out of there right before the floodgates opened. We started talking about the rain and it came i think that's definitely going to be the best way to get water in the pond because it spreads it out universally throughout the pond and there won't be nearly as much erosion it's sure enough storm coming through right now it won't take many of these to fill it up you can tell water's starting to puddle uh, we'll be interested to see where it starts kind of rolling off into the pond luckily we got all this grass planted it'll help with a lot of erosion right there around it, but you can see it's starting to fill up. Here's what I'm worried about. Look at that watershed. It's like a river flowing down into the pond right now. That's what you really don't want. You don't want a bunch of water entering in one spot because that's where the bank will start eroding out. But luckily we got the grass in. Hopefully that'll hold off. Man, when it rains around here, it's violent rain. There's no just light showers. When it comes down, it's gonna come down fast. Pretty cool though, to be out here right whenever it's first filling up. Wow, that is crazy. 15 minutes ago, this pond was bone dry. And now we've already got some puddling going on. Most of the water definitely came in through the shallow end over there. Still got a light sprinkle going on, another big storm coming through. So I don't think it's gonna take that long to fill it up. Just because how much watershed we have coming down. Plus, like I said, it's just such heavy rains around here. Look at it, it's already over the top of the drain valve. So if I kept that closed it's gonna keep filling up if I open it up it drain out but I think we're gonna keep it closed I just got a few more things I want to do in here before it gets really bad and I know that stuff right there is gonna get slick man I don't know what to think right now I'm excited that the pond is holding water that's a really good thing look back over there got a waterfall kind of going off that back side where it drops off over there it's pretty cool we got us our own little man-made waterfall right there where it's going from the shallow pool right there around the oak throne dropping off down here into that deep big bass hole look at that half of that's already underwater we'll see if it floats or not it'll be a good test for that well that's a really good sign to see that it's holding water because you can tell that's solid as a rock everything's completely still if there was any kind of leaks i feel like you'd be able to see a little bit of water movement or bubbles or something right there around that drain pipe got some doves out there eating on alcatraz island right after the rain now let's take a quick flight with the drone around the pond to see how it affected all the different areas. And one of the comments I get a lot is, it doesn't look like you dug your pond deep enough. So we wanted it to be around 12 feet and that's exactly what we got. And a lot of times this drone makes everything look shallow. So hopefully with this water in there and the different type of pockets, you can see the different deep areas before we get it all the way full. We got a big puddle right there at the Oak Throne. And then check that out. It's like a waterfall leading down to what I call bullseye, the big wooden circle. So I got a little bit of a dilemma. The pond is 95% complete and the last thing we lack is building the dock before we let it fill all the way up with water. And I really wanted it to be dry when we built the dock so I could look down there and make sure we didn't puncture through that clay liner. And I've already got somebody ready to build the dock. We're looking at building it this week, but as most of you know, Hurricane Ida, or Ida, however you pronounce it, is coming through as we speak so we're getting hit with some heavy rain right now so depending on which way this storm tracks there is a potential that we could get heavy rains and fill the pond all the way up so i've basically got two options i could leave it full and go in with something like a floating dock or i could drain it down build the dock get everything 100 percent complete and then if we don't get any storms it may still take you know two or three months to fill it back up 
So leave a comment down below on what you think I should do if it fills up. Leave it full or drain it and start over. And check out the island. It's still got that red top on it. Our daughter Sarah says that it's a volcano. But I planted some Bermuda grass and it's not coming up. So I think I may go in and plant it with winter rye grass or that brown top millet. Now let's check out some of the game camera footage. And as always, there's still herds of deer coming through, especially around the soybeans. But one thing I've noticed as new bucks start coming through, some of them have that non-typical look like this one. It looks like he may have a double main beam on one side and possibly a split brow tine on the other. It's definitely interesting to see some non-typical look when 99% of them have all been typical. And a bunny rabbit out there munching on the peanuts. And last but not least, we get to enjoy some Moby topwater blow-ups. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because we're nearing the end where we're going to fill it up with water and then add the fish. So there's a lot of good times coming up. But I hope you all enjoyed this one and we will see you all next time. <laughs>